Japanese embassy, uh, uh, as the uh, government of Japan, uh, the biggest of which or that can deal with the ministry here uh, is uh, Louis or Yan Louis, given to uh, different uh, governmental ministries here in Egypt. In order to achieve successful cooperation, Japan must first know quite well about Egypt and Egypt China. The Ministry of Youth and Schools has a big role to play here. Japan needs more to know about Egypt, to get more in its culture, to get more in its uh, 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 NGOs. I mean, if we talk about uh, youth centers, NGOs. And as non governmental social organization, this is another sector that works under the Ministry of Social Solidarity, we can have more cultural program to, to, to get to know each other more. Japan as, as, as people as, uh, as people in Japan and the Egyptian people as well, they need to know each other more. It's not only one side giving. A few days ago, the Japanese Prime Minister's wife was in Cairo. She visited Cairo University and she met with the students of the Department of the Japanese Language. The students expressed their fascination of Japan. We also promised to present Egypt to the Japanese and present Japan to the Egyptian people. It's the youth who can only build bridges between cultures and between peoples. The event of today reveals that people in both Japan and Egypt are quite aware of this fact. Abu Shusha, Nile TV International. The National Council for Women held a conference to discuss the role of women in combating terrorism. The conference was titled Women and Terrorism, in which number of women from different government ways, besides a number of public figures and high-ranking senior officials, attended the conference. Our correspondent Linda Belatif was there and filed in this report. For the title Women and Terrorism, the National Council for Women held a conference to announce the support for the country in combating terrorism. The conference is uh, to draw attention of the people and of the community that the uh, women do have an important role in combating terrorism, mainly by educating the her children, uh, not only by giving them enough food or uh, discipline of uh, uh, manners or so on, but to, to ensure that their mind is uh, Their mind is for uh, the, the country, how they, they should love their country. The conference also tackled a number of issues including the role of women in combating terrorism and protecting national security. The conference was attended by a huge number of women from different governments, besides a huge number of public figures and high-ranking senior officials. This conference is important and valuable, and a great idea by the Council to hold a campaign to make women aware of the danger of terrorism and the negative impacts of terrorism. So the conference in all means have beneficial targets. The Ministry of Interior is playing the main role besides the armed forces in combating terrorism. So the Ministry of Interior is doing its best to fight terrorism in the country with all the sacrifices it takes. The conference also discussed the increased efforts of the society in combating terrorism. The conference was attended as well by representatives of civil society organizations who spoke about the role of civil society organizations in fighting terrorism. Uh, as to the role of civil society organizations in combating terrorism, we help women through moving awareness campaigns for them. And as to the workers' unions, for example, our campaigns include teaching women how to protect themselves and face any problem that they encounter in the streets, so that we empower them to protect themselves. This conference that is organized by the National Council for Women stresses on the fact that women are the backbone of the society. Women play an important role in raising the new generation of being patriotic and on despising any kind of terrorism or violence. Linda Abdelatif, Nile TV International. The 
a global consultancy agency producing annual economic reports expressed hope towards science that heralded a significant improvement of the Egyptian economy in 2015. More in the following report. Consultancy's firm's recent report mentioned that investors' confidence in the Egyptian economy was growing. Among the signs of recovery stated in the report was Egypt's growth of 2.2% for the fiscal year ending June 2014. According to the report, the IMF and the government forecasting 3.8% growth in the current fiscal year has also helped to restore the confidence of the investors. It added that the outlook has helped sustain the stock market with share prices rallying at 32% during the year, making the Egyptian stock market the top Arab stock market in 2014. Moody's rank to Egypt's economy recovering from negative to stable was a welcome sign. Suez Canal project is expected to contribute to the growth of the economy, reduce unemployment rates and increase the canal revenues to more than double besides other projects in technology, infrastructure, commerce, tourism and agriculture that are expected to improve Egypt's situation and an industrial and logistics center. The report expected Egypt to attract further investments in the economic summit planned for March 2015. The report praised the Minister of Tourism, Hisham Zazo's efforts on reviving tourism and expected the sector to return to the pre-revolution levels by April 2015. Between July and September, tourism revenues surged 112% year-on-year to 2 billion US dollars, while October data showed this upward trend continuing with a 79.5% year-on-year increase in tourist arrivals according to official data. Projections for 2014 put tourism revenues at 7 billion US dollars catering to 10 million tourists. The report said that despite challenges on the horizon such as energy shortages, political risks appear to be diminishing. Well, this brings us to the end of today's edition of Inside Egypt. Thank you for watching.